This is the BWO Weekly Weather Briefing, December 17th, 2017. Well, right now, this is the upper air flow. The shadings here of yellow, green, red, and blue indicate where we have stronger winds. You can see one branch of the jet stream is fairly strong over the southern part of the U.S. We have some energy ejecting out here. These are little waves here that are ejecting out. Each one of those can have some energy, and that gives us a clue of that might be where we expect all of our weather, or at least the majority of our weather, over the next several days. Now, when we look at the upper air temperature anomalies here, we see areas of cold air in purple, areas of mild air in red. Sort of misleading here. Um, usually, I like to look at this region right here sort of as our source region. And I don't really see that cold air pooling there. And sometimes you can look at this, the analysis, and doesn't always give you the best clue as to what is expected in the future. Usually does, but in this case, I don't think it really is all that evident of what is right around the corner with some very cold air. Now, over the last seven days, it was just fairly quiet across the nation as expected. We have this lee side low, um, snow here that came off the Great Lakes, so some heavy snow in that region. And then this is a system over the south central U.S. that is relatively new, be pushing off to the uh, northeast here, and I'll be talking about that in this briefing. Well, here's the snow that's on the ground at the current time. Mostly uh, along the far upper Midwest, parts of the Great Lakes states have some snow. Also, the mountainous regions of the west, and actually you can see a little bit here in the Appalachians, um, extending down the Appalachians as well. And over the last week, it was primarily lake effect snow. Lakes are still open. That might be changing, though, as we get into late December quite a bit. But look at this. You can see just on the lee side of the lakes, enhanced snow. Actually, even a couple feet of snow in this, these areas in red. Now we do have some significant soil moisture anomalies, mainly dry anomalies, and these are the areas in red. You can see Southern California. That's one of the reasons we've been having the high fire risk and the fires, the extensive fires um, in the recent past. Also the winds, Santa Ana winds and other winds down in Southern California. But also we have an area over the central part of the nation from Southern Illinois, Southern Missouri, Arkansas, down towards Louisiana, and then surrounding states. Now, temperatures over the last week, over the eastern U.S., a little bit below normal, modestly below normal. In the central and the plains, temperatures well above normal. I tell you, there are going to be some super temperature swings in this region here. This is going to go from about 20 degrees above normal to 20 degrees below normal over a period of a week or two. So, very extreme temperature changes. Now, there aren't too many spots in flood at the current time and there are quite a few spots with low flows. Sort of keep an eye on this area right here, right in this area, I believe. That area has either modestly below normal flows to significantly below normal flows, and that has the potential of getting some significant rain this week, so that would be beneficial to a degree. Um, unfortunately, we might get not only past that beneficial point to where we might have a risk for some flooding. Now the big story for the entire nation is going to be a very significant change in the jet stream pattern between now and Christmas. Right now we have this uh, polar circulation right here this low and around it we have these lobes and these uh, lobes are going to eventually carve out a very deep trough of low pressure over the U.S. and spill some pure Arctic air, by far the coldest air so far this season, into a large part of the nation. Now for the first couple days this week, it's going to be pretty pleasant. Temperatures are going to be above normal over many areas, as indicated in red. Sort of misleading as to what's right behind this. So when we look towards Tuesday, what we have here is we have several fronts and the front over the so south central U.S. and the southeast U.S. will have a number of waves along there. And what I mean by waves are areas of low pressure. And each one of these will increase or enhance precipitation. That's going to be our focus for precipitation. But if we look up further to the north, look at this. This is that pooling cold air. And we're going to have one front. Here's one. 
Here's two, and each one's going to reinforce the cold air. And that's going to really be the story as we look forward to the latter part of this week and next week. So as far as precipitation goes, I think the two areas to watch are maybe three, but the southeast U.S. will be one area, and right now the potential is for over six inches of rain. Now runoff guidance in these areas, because it's been dry, indicates about three inches of rain, maybe even a little bit more before we start to get into any real significant problems. That doesn't mean we can't have issues with lighter amounts or lower amounts for smaller drainages but about three inches. So for a while, it's going to be a beneficial rain. It's going to help recharge soil moisture, bring some rivers up. But six inches in those areas, that has that possibility of exceeding um, runoff guidance values and producing flooding. So I think we will be talking about the risk for urban flooding, pooling of water, flash flooding, and maybe some main stem river flooding, primarily on the smaller rivers. But Let's keep an eye on that because that could change over the next couple of days. The other area to watch is the Pacific Northwest for enhanced precipitation. And it does look like some lee side snow will continue over the Great Lakes region. Now I wanted to, wanted to mention over the southeast U.S., it's not necessarily unusual to get some active weather this time of year. I talked about that secondary severe weather season, usually more in November. It's getting a little late, but this is the climatology where if we do get severe weather, where it might occur. Now we don't really expect much severe weather. There is a marginal risk today, but if it would occur, it's not all that unusual because that is where the moisture is this time of year. It's not likely you're going to pull that moisture much further up northward this time of year. So this is that clash between the warm moist air and the cooler air sinking down from the south. Now snow this week, here's the potential. Got a couple things. We have the lake effect snow that I've talked about. We've got the intermountain snow or the mountainous region snow. But look at the other areas of snow we're starting to get here. Because the air is so cold, it's not going to take much to produce a little bit of snow out of each one of these. So I think this is a low confidence where the snow will be, but we're starting to see this one, two, or three inch snow because the air, the atmosphere is getting cold enough. Now we're getting into the 22nd to the 27th of December here. Your polar circulation is up here, it's, so you can't really say the polar vortex is sinking south all that much but the low itself the lobe around this low has really beginning to carve out this trough and what that's a do, doing is allowing much colder air to push into the region so what do we see here on this period this is a 27th one thing we see here is look at the boundary here so we're going to have a boundary here and that's going to give us the potential mainly week two for some ice and snow along this boundary so let's keep an eye on this around christmas and the days uh, following. Also the continued risk for some precipitation over the southeast U.S. But behind it much colder air. And just give you a snapshot here on December 27th. Look how much of the nation is now covered with temperatures at least 15 degrees below normal. That's that purple. So that's going to be our big weather story for Christmas. Um, some areas of white Christmas probably more than we've seen in the last couple years but most notably the colder air. I don't get too scared with these temperatures here because this could change. Um, it might be overdone at this point, but it, look at this for the 27th, how far sub-zero temperatures go. So again, this is way out there. This could change, and it probably will to some degree, but I'm just saying it has the potential. When I'm talking about unusually cold air, this is that brutally cold winter air that we haven't seen for quite some time. Okay, the end of December, early January, it looks like it's going to linger. It's probably not going to be as intense. We're probably going to have one pulse that goes through. It's going to linger. So once this moves in, it's going to be around for a while. Rainfall week one, I think I talked about that, and week two. What I want to bring to your attention here is back-to-back -back weeks along this axis here. So we could be looking at some issues. And again, I think there is the potential as we get around Christmas, maybe just after Christmas, for some ice and snow as well um, on the colder side of that. So what we will be seeing is some very significant changes in soil moisture. And I showed you that, if you remember that soil moisture map that I started this briefing with, how dry it was. So we're going to go not just from temperature, extremely mild in some areas, to very, very cold. We're going to go from very dry to perhaps very wet over the south central U.S. 
So let's uh, just review these hazards here. The heavy rain risk this week, heavy snow risk over the Great Lakes region. Um, high winds over the uh, so Southern California. Then as we get into the 8 to 14 day, look at the lines, everything's blue. So the risks pretty much shift to cold and um, fr frozen precipitation risks as we get into week two. And I also wanted to mention from a fire weather perspective, today and tomorrow, Sunday and Monday, there is, uh, especially today, a very high fire weather risk over Southern California. Also tomorrow, not qu perhaps quite as uh, much. So that's sort of, sort of the briefing as we go forward. Looks like a um, very active period coming up ahead. Um, it looks like the weather headlines will be the heavy rain over the southern U.S. Um, with potential for flooding and it looks like most of the nation is going to be talking about winter cold settling in and lingering right through the holiday period. Hope you all have a great week. If you have any questions you can always email me at john, j-o-h-n, at bluewateroutlook.com. Take care.